Hello everyone and welcome to my vitamin D walk talk. Today I am getting 21 IUs a minute because it's super overcast and it's really hot. Like this is my first week walk in a very long time because it's been about 100 degrees out here and right now it's about 92 degrees so this is a little hot for a walk but I needed to get out. I needed to get some steps, get the very minimal vitamin D that I'm getting but I feel like over the past few weeks I've gotten a lot of vitamin D. I've been outside been kind of busy doing a lot of things. I was on vacation and I was outside the whole time after that. So I'm getting, getting a lot of sun that I haven't been tracking. So I think my tracker is showing that I'm a little bit lower than I am for my vitamin D, but I think it's a lot higher. So hopefully when I do my blood work, it'll be up there and it's not gonna be low. But I haven't been on here for a while. Wanted to pop on and check in, say hello. Wanted to talk about my trip to the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Um, it was incredible. It was really, really awesome to go out there. Um, I had never been to New York. I have never really been to any sort of fruit festival or any sort of raw vegan events like this before. There was about, I think there's about 380 attendees. And then they said they had about like 60 to 80 volunteers. So there was a lot of people that were at this event, like a ton of people, but I guess like it was smaller than in years past because I guess pre COVID it was about 600 to 700 people. So a little bit less, but there was still a lot of people. And I met some really awesome people. I had some amazing conversations. I gave out my business card a lot to people because a lot of people are, I mean, we've been vegan for so long and I always wonder like, am I really healthy? So a lot of people talk about blood work and I'm like, Hey, I can do blood work. I can pull your blood work. I know what to actually look at for a raw vegans as well and blood work because I've been trained that way. Do you think a regular doctor knows what a raw vegans blood work should look like for optimal health? <laughs> no, they don't even think you should be eating raw vegan like in general. So it's interesting that I have this background, this information, I can help a lot more people to see, okay, let's check out your iodine, let's check out your B12, let's check out your nutrients and see where you're at. So hopefully I get some people uh, rolling in for that because that'd be awesome. I love looking at blood work. I actually got one while I was out that I will be looking at this weekend. But yeah, when I got back from Woodstock, I had a friend staying with me. So it was, she wanted to do stuff and go out and do stuff. And I just really, really didn't have time to kind of catch up on my work or do a lot of my stuff that I needed to do. So. Now it's like this weekend, I'm just gonna have time to myself. I can work on blood work reviews. I can catch up with my vegan business training. Um, gotta work on a couple of things this weekend and yeah, it'll be fun. But Woodstock was really interesting because I thought I would have like a lot more time kind of to myself to reflect and really think about like, what do I truly want? Um, right before I left, I had kind of some crazy stuff happen with me in my career and a job that I thought would be mine was given to somebody else. There wasn't even an application process for this job. It was literally just handed to somebody else. And so I'm just like, wait a second, like what? Like I, th I should have that job. So I'm just kind of wondering like, am I doing what I truly want to do? Am I in the right place for what I truly want to do? And I feel like I did kind of work through a lot of stuff in my head. And today you guys, I actually stood up for myself. <laughs> I stood up for myself pretty big today. I was really, really nervous to do this, but I did. I sat a meeting with our president and I explained to him all my feelings, laid it out there. I was very open, very authentic with him. Very just like, this is what I want. This is what I feel like I, I deserve. I mean, I've been with this company for 11 years. So I think things are gonna change. Our conversation went really, really well. Um, I think he was very not aware of my feelings. So it's good to communicate and I feel like it's really important to be very communicative. So I'm going to also be communicating my feelings to other people in the company and hopefully things change because I'm not really happy with what I'm doing right now and I know I can do a lot more. So let's see if they give me that opportunity. And if not, I've got more things to think about. So um, yeah, it was kind of, I thought I would have more time to kind of really truly figure that out. and. I wanted to meet some people from Florida because I was thinking, okay, maybe Florida is a good place for me to, to go to. And um, I did meet some really awesome people from Florida and they did announce that the Fruit Festival is moving to Florida. So I will be out there in February at the Fruit Festival. But I don't know, I'm still kind of, I love California. I'm very much still, I don't feel like my time here is over. So I'm not really jumping to go to Florida anytime soon right now, but it's still a possibility, you never know. The only two places that I could live in the United States would be California and Florida, so that is it. But I did a ton of different activities at Woodstock. There was zero, zero like no rest. I woke up in my cabin, that was awesome because I had this huge cabin 
it was supposed to be like nine girls in this cabin and there was literally only me and like two other people so they were super quiet they were older they were in bed by like nine o'clock and it was awesome because i'd kind of sneak in about 9 30 and go to bed and most people they had bonfires and they had kind of like parties and stuff at night but i mean this was a zero alcohol there was no alcohol there was no drugs at this event so people were just kind of partying and having fun and just vibing with each other but i was tired after waking up really early and just go 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 i was like I'm ready for bed about 9 30. I was in bed. I think the latest I was in bed was about 10 o'clock. So yeah, that was, and that was because there was a durian party and that's why I went down to the durian party that I was at. So yeah, it was definitely, um, I'm going to cross the street really quick, right across the street. People always honk at me on the street when I'm not walking fast. But anyways, um, yeah, so I woke up probably about 6 45 or so and my sweet mates were probably, they were still in bed. So it was very, very quiet and I had to get ready really quietly. It's really wet out here. So I got ready really quietly, got all my stuff and then the food opened at about 7.30 a.m. So we get down there probably about 7.15 or so and be kind of waiting for the food. So the morning they had melons and it was just like unlimited melons. There was watermelon, there was cantaloupe and everybody loved the cantaloupe but for me, I get really, really, really good sweet melons from a farm. So the cantaloupe didn't really taste very good to me, but everybody was just like, oh, this cantaloupe is so good. I'm just like, no, it's definitely not. <laughs> That's the one thing about living in California, you guys. I was able to get almost all of the fruit that I ate at that festival out here. So it was just kind of like, I was kind of expecting a little bit more variety, a little bit more exotic fruits. Um, but yeah, I was, I did really like the watermelon. It tasted really good. I think my favorite fruit they had was the yellow watermelon. Um, it was amazing. It tasted just like it tastes out here. It's so good. It's one of my favorites. And now that it came back here, the watermelons aren't so good. They actually don't really taste as sweet. They're kind of a little bit mushier. So I'm like, oh man, I think, I think I just missed watermelon season. I think it's over now, but I would always get my melons. And then about 8.30 or so, I would have an activity. There was either yoga, there was Tai Chi, there was kind of um, one that we learned all about our movements and like how to prevent injuries and how to stand properly and how to all this stuff. So I would do some sort of activity. And then right after that, I was always at Don Bennett's lectures. So I went to Don Bennett's lectures at 10. So from 10 to 11, I sat in a lecture about health and I learned more about raw vegan health because he's been educating for I think like 50 years or so. He's been educating for a while. He's definitely up there with Dr. Robert Morse um, as far as what he knows and his education. He is a lot more into supplements. So he talked a lot about iodine. He talked a lot about B12. He talked a lot about vitamin D, getting vitamin D from the sun. Did you know that we don't just get vitamin D? Vitamin D is not the only vitamin D. We actually call it D plus because there's actually other vitamins that we get when our sun is absorbing, our skin is absorbing the sun. There's other vitamins that we get that have such a benefit to us, but we haven't really studied all of them. So there's still kind of a little bit to know and learn about this, but it's not just vitamin D3 that you're getting from the sun that makes you feel good. It's other things too. So when you take a supplement, you're not getting all of these things. You're missing those other extra things that you do get from the sun. So getting it from the sun is the best way to go or a, a lamp. There are vitamin D lamps that you can get if you live in an area that you can't get the vitamin D. But he talked a lot about this kind of stuff. And so I always sat in his lectures. And then from like 11 to 12, they had the coconut station. So you all you go down and get in line and get your fresh like coconut, your young coconut and drink the, drink the water, eat the meat. And then about 12, 12, 15, you kind of hang out, hang out and talk to people down there. They had lunch was open. So they serve more fruit. Um, they take out the melons, they bring in more bananas. They had like mayonnaise sapote. They had really good pineapple because pineapple is hard to get. They had mangoes. They had kind of a little bit more fruit for lunch. You get a bunch of fruit. Then after that, typically about 1.30, I would go to another lecture or another event. And about three o'clock, I would go to a workout. There was an amazing body weight workout that I did with this trainer that was from Sweden. So it was really fun to do his workouts because it was all body weight. And it was like the same stuff that I'm typically doing, but his names for things were completely out there. Like, I think one of the things was you're, you're taking your beast for a walk. <laughs> it was just like, what? That's, that's a bear crawl. Like, so it was just completely different. Um, but I really enjoyed his classes. And then from four to six, six, the dinner was open. So dinners was basically like a salad buffet. They had tons of salad, uh, like lettuces, and they made just different dressings with no oil, no nuts. So it was pretty similar to kind of how I eat normally. And then I was pretty much eating after that. I didn't really eat after 4.30 or five because I kind of, I jumped into another activity or a yoga or like they had different like events at the town center rec hall. So they had like, the, um, the newlywed game, which was really fun. They had karaoke kind of to watch people. So 
it was just all day of just like going back and forth and you had to hike up this huge hill to get places to do anything so by the third day my calves were just like okay yeah you're doing a lot of work but it was awesome because I was just constantly moving um, did some paddle boarding did a little mudding I covered myself in this like dead sea mud that it dried on my skin and it made my skin so soft um, but you wash it off in the water and you go swimming so that was pretty cool but yeah I met a lot of really cool people um, I had some interesting feelings about it. I was kind of not sure if I would return. Um, there was a lot of bees. I don't do well with bees. There was a lot of flies everywhere. And I did end up getting food poisoning on the last day. So there's a lot of negatives on the fact of, I was not sure if I was gonna return, but they announced that it is moving to Florida. The Woodstock Food Festival is no longer gonna be in New York. Um, it's going to be in Florida in most likely February. They don't have a location yet. They don't have the cost for that yet, but I'm just like, hmm. I would go to Florida. <laughs> like, I just hope that there's not bees. Um, so I don't know, I'm still kind of thinking like, do I go? I think I would go just to meet the people in general. I think I need to be better about following up with people. I think I probably should have kept an email list for other people so I could email them after the festival. Um, Cause you never know, they could have lost my business card here and there. And I didn't really like write down who I was talking to about it. So I think I should be better about networking with my business and um, tracking the people. Definitely something I'm going to work on because <laughs> I'm not that good at it in general. <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't know. I think I'm curious to see the details of it uh, that come out and I probably will attend, but we'll see. Hope you guys have a great day.